Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be talking about how to use the publisher's PR to close more deals. I'm so pleased to be joined by Akiamatica. And a couple introductions. We have Sean Chatterjee, VP of Partner Sales, with us on the call today. We have Donna Krizik, Scott Koblenz. Donna, Donna is the Director of Partner Marketing and Programs. Sean, as you all probably are aware, is the VP of Sales over at Acumatica. Uh, Scott Koblenz, Acumatica Director of Partner Recruitment. And Mark Reithaus, Partner Recruiting Inside Sales Manager. And I'm going to go ahead and let Sean get started with the presentation. Thank you so much, Sean. Great, absolutely. Uh, really excited to be here with all of you today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, my role here in Acumatica is I lead the sales team that is uh, working with all of the partners. And today, the topic of discussion is about how do we help our partners in, in getting and acquiring new customers and, and closing deals. Now, before I get started and before I point about, you know, I'll point out different ideas and strategies, I hope everybody knows the fact that we are 100% partner-led which means that we don't compete with our partners. We also have some policies that are extremely partner friendly. For example, when we do get a lead and we wanna give it to a partner, we always make sure that we give it to one partner based on the fit. And we don't try to, we don't try to increase our chances of winning by giving it uh, to multiple partners. So we are always you know, trying to work with a partner on a specific opportunity. And that's, that really helps us because what happens then is that we start working as a team from the very get-go. And there is never a feeling of animosity that, hey, maybe Acumatica, you know, is trying to do something that may hurt my chances of closing the deal. You know, so it is always working as a team. And our goal, our mutual objective is not just to win the customer, but the mutual goal is to get a great, happy reference at the end. And that's what's going to help us grow our business successfully together. So I've got a few pointers and I've got a few tips for you. The first one goes out and specifically is meant for those partners who are brand new coming into our channel. And one of the things I always like to tell people is that when you're brand new as a partner and you know and you're, you're this product uh, is you know you do not have customers on this product you may not have all of the expertise in Acumatica, as you have probably with some of the products that you've carried for 15, 20, 25 years, how do you get a prospect to be comfortable with you not only leading the sales cycle, but also project managing and getting the customer live on the Acumatica system? You know, so these can often be objections in the sales cycle that we need to proactively address from the beginning. So the other objection that may come up for a new partner with a new product is that references. Do you have customer references? And the answer often is no, you know, with references as it pertains to Acumatica. So a couple of things we do. One is that we always recommend new partners team up with Acumatica for implementation assist, where we assist for the first couple of customers that they acquire, our services team works alongside our partner in getting the customer live. That is very important, and it's important for your positioning as well from the get-go, that even though I do not have customers on Acumatica, guess what? The end prospect is getting the best of both worlds. They're getting your expertise as a VAR, you know, having worked in the ERP segment for such a long time, but at the same time, they are having Acumatica as the publisher working on the, op on the, on the implementation with the partners, so they really get the best of of both worlds, you know, where Acumatica teams up with a new partner for doing implementation assist. That's number one. And we have lots of references that can be, that we can point to that have gone through the implementation assist and gone live. The second thing that is also equally important is to work with your PAM or your partner account manager while you run with the opportunity. In specific steps in the sales cycle, for example, prior to your demo, if you're doing a corporate presentation, it's a great time for the partner account manager to present the Acumatica story, but also 
take that opportunity to say why partnering with your organization is so critical to our mutual success. A prospect often gets comfortable when they see that teamwork in play right in front of their eyes. So I always recommend that when you do have a deal, a good opportunity, don't work it alone. You know, work with your partner account manager, work with our services team, make sure you have the complete story from the get-go so that all of the objections that might come up at the end are all addressed up front by being a team. So that's a very important thing for me to, to stress that you know, the, with the right planning, with the right uh, attitude, we can win deals from the get-go. Now for existing partners who are already working with us in the channel, one of the things I, I, I talk about is the importance of having exec or executive calls for some of your top opportunities. You know, sometimes you're facing competition, you've done a really good job doing the demonstration, showing the Acumatica value proposition, and at the very end of the process, sometimes, you know, you need that little extra push. And that can be provided by having, you know, a quick one-on-one -on -one call scheduled with anyone from our CEO, John Roskill, our CFO, Nigel, myself, and even the partner account manager who is working with you. This call, again, establishes the, relation, the strength of the relationship. It also helps you do something that oftentimes your competition may not be able to achieve, which is give the prospect that level of comfort that they have uh, a bridge of communication open with the executive team at Acumatica. So it's always worked out well for us. You know, choose those key one or two deals that you think this kind of an engagement is going to help push the deal over the finish line. And I can tell you, it's been fantastically successful for us. We also announce quarterly promotions. And I'm personally not a big fan of discounting your price. The promotions, however, is aimed towards really closing the deal within your defined time frame. There are multiple times where you come to a situation where you've worked with the prospect, everything looks good, the prospect says that they want your solution, but the timeline is open-ended. And we all know this old saying, the time can kill deals. So sometimes the promotion is the tool that you need to put in front of the prospect because the promotion will have an end date. And so to be able to use that as a way to create a compelling reason for that prospect to move forward and sign the dotted line. So I do want to let you know that every quarter we come up with some promotions that are really geared towards closing. I don't ever recommend sharing a promotion with the prospect in the first proposal or until such time that you have sensed that the prospect wants to move forward and you've had the discussion about you know, there being, you, know, you being the vendor of choice for that prospect. And the last thing I wanna point out before I hand the ball over to Donna is that nothing can replace training. And I can tell you that my team, myself included, and all of our partners that we work with, we are constantly trying to train on competitive landmines. What is NetSuite doing to disrupt our sales cycle? What, what kind of presentation are they presenting to the prospect? Do we know enough about our competitor in every deal? And if we do, then guess what? We are gonna proactively address those landmines, you know, before they can actually impact our sales cycle. And by doing so, you're gonna find that the chances of your winning the deal is gonna go up by that much. NetSuite, for example, has been recently using a, 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 a deck to discredit Acumatica. And it has a lot of different points in it. And we train as a company to be able to respond to that before the prospect asks us the question that, hey, tell me a little bit about these three or four points that NetSuite has told us about Acumatica. So, so to summarize, you know, we talked about new partners and we talked about how new partners can use implementation assist as well as their PAMs participation by doing corporate presentations. The, the value of references and being able to proactively understand what references may be needed and try to put that, sprinkle that in your sales cycle. We talked about existing partners who have worked with us for a while and the, and the need to do executive uh, engagements for certain key deals that they're facing. And also the usage of promotions as a closing tool
to uh, to make sure that the prospect moves on a timeline that you have put on the proposal. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much. And with that, um, I'm going to hand this over to, to Donna. Wonderful. Thank you, Sean. Those were great. So I'm Donna Krizik, Director of Partner Marketing and Programs for Acumatica. And today, I'm going to focus a little bit on how you take the information that is available to you from your publishers, whether it's Acumatica or another one, and really make the most of it and close more deals. So my background, just a couple of quick details. I came from the partner channel myself before I started at Acumatica. So I spent 12 years um, doing partner marketing for two different partners and got a lot of uh, feet on the street experience and I've sat in your shoes. So what I'm doing here, I hope will be very approachable and usable for you. So one of the things um, that I felt on when I was on the receiving end of publisher information is that there's a lot of it. We get a lot of emails from publishers. We get a lot of content. The portal is stock full of information that you can use. And we're not always the great greatest at actually taking some action. And so I was having a planning call with Jeff Ashley from Acumatica, who's the enablement team VP. And you know, he's quite passionate about this topic. And he, you know, his question to this audience, to, to our Acumatica partners and those who might be partners is, if you're getting information from the publisher, what are you doing with it? Have you taken some action? Have you done something? If it's critical for your pipeline, which a lot of this information is, have you created a plan for how you're going to use what you get? Right now, I think I'm going to hop out and show you. Um, one of the things that Acumatica just recently sent out to all of our partners and did a really wide push is some great competitive information. And Sean referenced some of this when he was talking to you. But we have done our PR team has done a fabulous job of getting us some PR, some, some rankings, some user feedback. We've got reviews on G2 Crowd. We've got all kinds of information out there about how we are a head and shoulders above of our competition. And it is in a fantastic format. I'm going to jump out here real quick and go over to the website. And we've got this post by Kim Plank about all of the different p press that we've gotten. And we've sent this out to all of our partners and it's freely available for you to use. And it's highly visual. I'm not able to see this very great with all the pop-ups here, but there's a lot of visual um, components to it that make it really amazing. I mean, if you look at poor Infor down here at the very, very bottom, if I was them, I would feel very bad. But this is a great tool for you to use in your sales cycle to close more deals. I would start out with this image because you don't want to introduce competition if you don't already have it. But if someone is looking at other products, this image is going to really make us stand out. And so this is what um, we were referring to, these graphs, and all of this is available to our partners. It's actually available to anybody. It's on our, our public-facing website, but it's also in some more user-friendly formats on our portal. So if I go back to what we were talking about here, we've sent this out. What have you done with it? If I was to ask my top five partners, okay, that competitive information, that award-winning Acumatica Rocks information that we sent you, what's your plan? What are you going to do with it? Have you done anything with it? Do you, does your whole team know about it? So what we're going to address today is ways that you can actually do that. Um, six ways to use publisher material. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on each one of these, including some strategies to use for each of those and how you get the word out and optimize. And this doesn't, you know, if you're not an Acumatica partner, that's fine. You can use this with any publisher information that's high impact like this information is. The first one, so your corporate deck. When is the last time you updated your corporate deck? Um, I know that it's a drag and it can be not a very favorite activity of folks, but if you don't have a current corporate deck, you need to take this opportunity to recreate one. And 
if it starts with your about us slides you know that lovely map slide that you have where all your locations are and all your customers are and how great your people are and your products that you serve and the logos of all your customers if that's what you have in your presentation throw it out delete it today i'm serious no one wants to hear this information up front in a presentation that you're giving them this is self-serve information they should have already gotten all of this on your website should you have this information available absolutely just not at the front of a presentation if you went to a doctor with a problem and he spent the first 15 minutes of your visit talking about where he went to medical school and 10 other random random clients that he is servicing would you care you'd still want him to talk about your problem and how he's the best option to solve your problem. That's what your about us and your corporate deck should be. And I would limit yourself if you're putting this in any other customer facing presentation or prospect facing presentation, limit yourself to one slide, put it in four quadrants, separate you know, how you help them do A, how you help them do B, and so on and so forth. But this information that we're talking about, this press that we've gotten, all of these rankings and ratings, these are so visual and so helpful. This is the kind of information that would be, if you're going to, have to do an, anything about you or anything about your product, this is the kind of stuff you want, not the generic stuff that's about where you serve and who you serve. So number one, update the corporate deck. Next you have to tell your audience about it, your internal audience. This was kind of a failing of even some top partners that we've got. You have a corporate deck, but maybe only two people have seen it or the marketing department is the keeper of it and no one knows where it is. So where's the most recent one? Is it on somebody's desktop? You really don't want that. So you make sure that the whole company has seen it and then you make sure you review it with everybody because you have to explain to them what it means. They're not going to know, especially if they're not marketers. They're not going to know what to do with it, how to walk people through it. Can they find an always on updated version? Do they have the elevator pitch down? So for these charts and graphs that you're providing, do they know how to talk about these with a prospect? You need a script and you need for everyone to have easy access, always updated access and to be able to speak to it to anybody they come across in some simple terms in a quick way. So next we're talking about making sure that your audience sees it. So we talked about your internal folks that need to know how to use this deck. Well now your customers, all of your existing customers, whether they're on Acumatica or not, should know that we have this information available whatever it happens to be in this case we're talking about the press and the ratings and the rankings that we've gotten you need an email series you should add it to your signature put it on a business card put it in newsletter footers or other communication footers so that your entire customer base knows hey you represent a product that is winning awards left and right from both the user community community and the expert community. You want to add questions to it and make it engaging and have them want to learn more about this product that maybe they haven't heard a ton about but now is suddenly rising to the top. Next, if you're if you're not aware of our user groups, um, we're, we're rapidly expanding those. Acumatica has a couple that have been established in 2019 and about six more that are going to be up and running shortly. And this audience is extremely qualified and it's also inclusive of some prospects in addition to already Acumatica users. So one, you're getting the attention of some prospects, but then I hear from our partner world these days that up to 80% of their net new clients come from referrals. So this kind of information, if you send it out to your existing customer base, it's reaffirming that, hey, we made the right choice. It's a little bit, it could smooth over some rough edges if they're having maybe a rough time with a feature or a function or a go live. It can reinforce that, hey, 
no matter what's going on right now, we made the right choice. This is an award-winning solution. This is getting reviews. This is getting press. This is getting expert love. And they're going to really embrace being your evangelist and being an acumatic evangelist or whatever publisher you happen to be working with. And it pr proves to leadership they've made the right investment which is huge, especially in getting their sign off if you want them to be a reference or provide a quote or do anything else for you to drive more business. Your externally facing content, so anything that is going out to the audience en masse, so whether it's a newsletter or a video or a blog post or a white paper or some other content that you've created that's going to a large audience, put this as a call to action or as a proof point or as an extra thing they can read, watch, or learn about. Stuff like this, it serves as moving someone through your sales cycle, this, this press, this um, external validation basically from an expert or a user is invaluable and we've already done the hard part for you. This is already in existence. It's already been compiled and made pretty and in perfect formats that you can use as is or you can brand on your own. So make sure that you're telling everybody that's in your circle, whether it's your customer, your, your prospects, your internal folks, um, that it's out there. We've already done the hard part. So make sure that it makes it into that. And then the last two, I, I count, count this as one, but because they're so closely linked, but your website and social media, they're really your 12, your, your 24 seven salesperson. It's always on. It's where people can go no matter what time it is. And if your site doesn't have a press section or a comparison section yet, you should really try and create one. At the very least, you're gonna want a spot somewhere on your site where people can read news. And that's a spot where you could put this kind of information because it is high value, high interest information. And people are going to want to read about it. You're not, I wouldn't suggest putting it behind a form or you, know, you don't need a landing page per se for that purpose. Because I think if it's available freely on acumatica.com, it doesn't belong behind a form. But it's so visual that I think you might want to play around with it and make some, some really engaging pages on your site, or at the very least, a, an engaging article. Do you have 15 minutes? Take a few minutes, throw those, um, those articles up on your page, start a go-to meeting or a Skype session and record it and talk about the results and about some of the other competitors on there. Talk about how it was evaluated and how the experts came to the conclusions that they did. There's a lot of information out there on the reports from the analysts, how they come to those conclusions, what they base their ratings on, why they um, evaluated this particular set of solutions and so forth. And then you can add your own spin on it and how your experience with the product has led you to believe that they're right. And you create that and I'm saying maybe a minute, minute and a half and put that up on your website and you've got a fresh, relevant, extremely compelling video that you didn't have to pay for. Um, if you have a space on your website that you have your feed for your social media, this would be a great post. I would say you take some time and invest in planning out your a series of posts, do 15 to 20. Um, and oh, I'm actually getting ahead of myself a little bit, sorry, but Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever else that you use, create a series of posts that leverage these um, being so visual, they will lend themselves incredibly well to social along with your website. So then I will be wrapping it up here. We'll talk about how you keep track of what you're doing. So we're talking about how you're going to take the information your publish provides to you and really make the most of it and close deals. So if you're going to do all the things that we mentioned, I would suggest that you take baseline screenshots, snapshots of where you are with your metrics now. Then start to create your plan. 
create some timelines. You need deadlines. If you're going to update a deck and communicate it to your people, you know, schedule that all hands meeting now for the new year and make sure that you've got a timeline. Um, you don't need literal pop quiz, but I think you really need to, certainly for your sales and marketing folks, you need to be checking in with them in regularly and saying, hey, give me your elevator pitch. Give me your sales pitch. Give me your compete pitch. Um, find three places that you can add these to your signature or your business card or a header or the side panel of a page. Um, find your local user group. If you haven't already contacted Acumatica for them or other publishers, find your user groups and make sure you're telling them about the new things that come across. This is one example. So the press piece is one one thing that we published that I think is super high value, but along the year, there are lots of others. Pick eight to 10 spots on your um, content creation timeline to include those, whether it's a blog post or a blog post series, or it's a white paper or another article, or like I said, a quick video that you create yourself. And then choose three to five locations on your site and then also plan out 15 to 20 social media posts with the images and the timeline. And then establish your metrics so that you can measure against those. So at what point in this trajectory do you want to see all of your team have access to this information and be able to give you their elevator pitch? What kind of traffic increase do you want? Do you want people to go to a webinar after this? Do you want a number of views for your video or visits to a landing page that's really pretty that you invested in? Or form fills for supplemental content? Um, like I said, I wouldn't recommend putting this information behind a form, but if you've got this information out there, your call to action after they finish reading this could be something that's behind a form. So if you want to drive them to a white paper or something that's a little more meaty that they could fill in an email address and a first name, that would be a good thing to do there. So in closing, I would say back to the beginning, you know, publishers are always going to push out a ton of content to their channel. That's their job. That's my job, is to make you aware of all of the programs and materials that we have for you and help you use them. But what we have to make sure that you do is that you don't get immune because we communicate so much and because we offer so much that what you get, you actually take a minute to stop and read what we have and take some action. Jeff and I were, Jeff Ashley and I were talking before this call and you know, his style is a little bit stronger than mine. And um, you know, he, his, uh, <laughs> I won't quote him directly, but he said, if you haven't taken action on this, if you haven't done something with what we've sent you, what are you doing? <laughs> he said, this just has to be a priority. This is mission critical, to quote one of his terms, that you take what we have already invested in. You don't have to spend any money. All we're asking you to do is spend some time and digest what we send you and don't be immune to it. Don't put it in a folder to revisit later. Take a few minutes and put it on your schedule and make it a priority, make it important to you. And this will help you close business. This is not a brochure or a fact sheet that is going to get lost in the shuffle. This is compelling information. So that's my pitch for how to use PR. And I will hand it over now to Mark Rudhaus for some special announcements. Thanks, Donna. And thanks, Sean, for your helpful presentations. Um, if you can go back to the other slide um, about the uh, the summit. I guess that ended up, there we go, thank you. Um, so by now, hopefully you're familiar with our annual summit coming up in January. Um, you've probably received marketing from us about it, um, unless this is your first contact with Acumatica, in which case I'll be sending you information so you can see the details about the event. Uh, it's gonna be a great event this year. We'll be at the amazing Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. Um, already over 1,400 people are registered at this point. So it's going to be quite the party. Um, as always, it's a great opportunity to connect with everyone associated with Acumatica, whether that's us, the Acumatica team, 
Acumatica clients, analysts, and other partners. Uh, plus, uh, this year, one of our keynote speakers will be Robert Ballard, who is the one who discovered the Titanic. So from what we understand, he's quite the inspirational speaker, so we're happy to have him there. Um, in regards to the contest, as you can see, uh, your attendance at today's webinar qualifies you for a chance to win a three-day pass to Summit. So thanks for joining us today, and uh, hopefully you will be uh, one of the winners of the contest. So we'll be doing the drawing by December 20th, um, and as I mentioned, I'll be following up with those whose uh, exposure, uh, you know, this is their first time talking to us, and we definitely want to help any prospective partners learn the details of the program and, and uh, you know, be considered for um, being one of our resellers. So that's it for me, and um, I'll turn it over to, I believe, Scott, or is it back to Adrian at this point? I think yeah, that we're ready. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. No, I was just saying, yeah, Scott Koblenz, uh, Director of Partner Recruiting, and I just wanted to take a couple minutes and thank everybody for their time today. I know we're getting close to the end of the year, and time is precious. So for the existing brand new and prospective partners that are on the line, um, your time is, is very much appreciated today. Um, in terms of, I just wanted to say something about Donna's input. You know, I mentioned Donna and her team in every conversation I have with partners. Um, they're an incredible resource. If you're an incredibly strong marketer, um, bounce the ideas off of that team and see what their input is. If you're not a strong marketer, ask for their help. They're certainly willing to do it and do a great job at it. So. Thank you, Donna, for that input today. Um, a couple of items just to update you. Uh, in November, Jeff Ashley's team had an offsite meeting in our Bellevue headquarters that we discussed our 2020 strategy and how to you know, move the partner journey to an even higher level than it currently is. Um, I'm new to Acumatica about seven months, but have been in this industry about 22 years. And without hesitation, I can say this is the finest um, partner program I've ever been involved with. Um, so it's an exciting time here, and we are laying out um, next next great features for the, the journey that you'll be taking or are on. Um, I was yesterday, I don't know if you saw the press release um, from last week, but we formed an alliance with the fifth largest accounting firm in North America, actually in the world, um, BDO. I was in their office in Houston yesterday for a kickoff in terms of go to market and how they're going to be interacting. They will be at Summit. They are not a reseller, so they are not in any kind of competitive situation with us. It's an enhancement, and they have a very large uh, customer base that they will be um, bringing leads to the table here. So stand by for how to get involved with, with BDO and what that's going to look like. But um, it is a, it's a major win for the Acumatica um, channel in terms of how we move um, to larger prospects and more money. So that was great. And, and Sean, thank you for your input. Appreciate that. Again, I just want to reiterate his point. We are... 100% channel driven, so you are the most important thing um, to us in this company. And as John Roskill always says, you know, if you said, um, gee, I'm, I'm a programmer, I'm in development, um, he would correct you and say, no, um, you work with the partners and for the partners in the channel. Um, so you know, we're happy to help. I look forward to interacting and meeting everybody up at Summit. And for the prospective partners on the line, just as a a side note, um, the 20th is Friday, and then we pretty much lost um, the rest of the year to holidays. So if you do need anything from myself or Mark, um, sooner is better um, than trying to push this through our system at the last moment because we do have structure. So again, thank you so much for your time, and I will turn it back to Adrian. Thank you so much, Scott and team. 
I do have a poll up here. I'd like, uh, if you can, just take a second to answer this poll. That would be great. I see that 36% of you have voted. And we do have a couple questions. Um, we have a, a, a kind of a lengthy question here. <clears throat> we are creating an entire new company entity to focus on Acumatica. We won't be able we won't be in a position to sell any product for a few months because it's in development. When should we start building out marketing, i.e. a new website for this new office? Now, start now. In fact, yesterday. start yesterday. Yes, exactly. <laughs> because it takes longer than you think to actually do that that it also takes longer than everyone thinks to build traction once you have the site. So as soon as possible. And we will be primarily selling our products through the partner channel. Um, and you only have, um, two, it sounds like you only have a few hundred partners in your channel. Do we need to do extensive marketing to the partners? So it sounds like you may be an ISV, so you're creating a product for that would attach to Acumatica, and we do have um, 300 partners, and if you're an ISV, we have a channel internally that supports you. So we have three people on the ISV team that will introduce you, that will provide you with opportunities when you, do, when you join our Acumatica developer network. There's a fee to that, but you get advertising, you get a spot on our marketplace, in the directories, you get exposure on our, um, our marketing calls, our sales calls, you get sponsorship opportunities for Summit and other events throughout the year. So you get a kind of a, an entire package, but you do need to provide some of your own marketing as well. All, all partners do, whether they're ISVs or, or VARs. And then uh, we do have a question about Summit, Donna. Um, do you recommend any marketing conferences in particular at the upcoming Acumatica Summit 2020? So it's hard to be objective since they are my sessions, but <laughs> um, we do have um, a complete uh, marketing, I'm not calling it a track, I guess, but we have sessions that are broken out really by beginner and advanced, so we have a couple there, but then we have some what's working sessions because we heard from our channel that they really wanted more time to network with other partners that are succeeding at Summit. So we built in a couple of what's working sessions and I really recommend if you're thinking about email marketing or content promotion um, or video and list building, those four topics are going to be covered in detail by some highly successful partners along with some vendors and agencies from the industry, and you'll get a lot of time to do Q&A. And then uh, this, this question is for you, Scott. What does a strong marketing ERP partner look like? Okay, so ERP partner, um, any partner. So I've, I've been in software, not necessarily just ERP for, for these 20 something years. And depending on the size of the company and what your business plan looks like in terms of what you're trying to achieve for a specific period of time, let's call it a year, um, then you need to build out a business plan that includes marketing, almost want to do a separate marketing plan that puts together what successful partners are doing and what's working, which is what Donna just alluded to is one of the sessions. And, you know, sit down, we can sit down with, you know, partner recruiter or the marketing people and go through an actual marketing plan that timelines and milestones, what items are going to be purchased, when they're going to be sent, when, how they're going to be um, tracked and modeled. I mean, that is, that is 101 in terms of my world and what you need to do. The really high-end, top successful partners that I've seen have dedicated marketing people. So whether it's, it's one person full-time or a team full-time, if you're going to 
look at achieving a number. If you want to do 25 Acumatica deals in 2020, um, you need to have budget lined up uh, yesterday and people who are um, marketing savvy who can execute on those best practices that we can help you with and that are out um, certainly on uh, lots of different places on the internet that I can point you to or, or Donna can point you to. But it looks like success in marketing, looks like dedication, money, and execution. And do you have a rough budget for 25 new deals from a uh, media standpoint, not just internal employees? You know what, I actually have a, a, a tool a Excel spreadsheet that we can sit down with the marketing department and myself, and we can populate the different fields. Um, and it is it takes into consideration close ratios, expenditure, number of uh, leads, marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads, what the close ratio is on top of that, and what your target is. You know, 25 deals or a million dollars, however you want to call it, and um, we can we can populate that and and build a plan specifically for you. Um, Don is going to kill me because she's not seen this document before, um, but um, I, we can certainly lead you through that process. It's going to be individual per partner based on what you've got going on internally. Again, salespeople, how many marketing people, how many, um, what the goal is, whether it's dollars or units and budget. So happy to take that offline with Donna. Yeah, I need to talk about average deal size and and a lot of other factors in there too. Yeah. Your cost of acquisition. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us once again. It's we really appreciate you spending time with us here today. And uh, we know it's the hectic holiday season, and you got to get back to everything you're doing. And uh, we hope to see you on our next webinar. Thank you, everybody from Acumatica as well. Great presentation. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Yep. Thanks. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.